Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You were the reason why this content remains. Rolling around at the speed of sound. Got places to go, gotta follow your rainbow. Can't stick up. And today, we are going to discuss... Fast speed, a blistering pace, the fastest locomotives ever. Now I could easily just give you a list of the legitimate five fastest locomotives ever, but um, that would be really boring. So I decided to do this list by picking five different kinds of locomotives, all of which happen to be the fastest of their respective kinds. Additionally, another rule I wanted to add is it has to run on a pair of good old rails. None of that maglev stuff. Those are cool. Don't get me wrong. And for reference, those do hold the world record for being the fastest trains ever. But I think most of you would be more interested in hearing about trains that got really fast while on regular old rails. I just think that's a bit more interesting. So here's five of the fastest trains ever. The McKean Rail Motor. The McKean Rail Motor was a six-cylinder self-propelled rail car. It was first unveiled in 1905, and at that time it actually used distillate fuel, but later it was revised to use, well, gasoline. It, it pretty much just had a regular gasoline motor, setting the stage for a lot of other rail cars, or what we call in America, doodle bugs. And they were actually pretty successful. 152 were built and were purchased by several railways all over the world, actually. They were mostly seen in the United States between 1915 and the 1930s, on Union Pacific and Southern Pacific. But two of them wound up in Canada for the Alberta and Great Waterways Railroad. Victorian railways over on Australia used them, though interestingly they found theirs unreliable and converted them to regular passenger cars later. Queensland Railways, also in Australia, used five of them, and they actually lasted until 1931. At least one of the original cars is actually in preservation at the Nevada State Railroad Museum, number 22 of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. Another fun fact for these gasoline-driven rail cars is they are believed to be the first ever streamlined rail-based anything. They were designed to look fast, and they went fairly fast, especially for their time. Out of all gasoline motor vehicles that ran on rails, the McKeans are believed to have been the fastest, topping out at 129 kilometers an hour, or 80 miles per hour. That doesn't sound like a lot, because it isn't. But they were first tested in 1905. For that era, that was pretty fast. And doodlebugs in general usually don't go very fast, topping out about 50, maybe 60. These things could go 80. And that was a record that still stands today for a rail-based vehicle that uses gasoline. I'm sure it's possible to make another rail car that could have gone faster than the McKean's, but gasoline started falling out of favor when it came to locomotives in general in the early 1900s, mostly due to gasoline's tendency to... Right, that, that was bad, so they stopped using it. The DRG Class 05. Ooh, that looks... sci-fi. Welcome back to Germany! Of course, it's Germany. The Deutsche Reichsbahn's Class 05 were a group of three express passenger steam locomotives. They were 464s, four sometimes called Baltics, though in America we would know them as Hudsons. And already I can hear some of my fans from the United Kingdom seething because this isn't the fastest steam locomotive ever. There's another that's faster. So why is it even on the list? Well, a couple reasons. First of all, it was the fastest steam locomotive ever for a period of about two years. And it does still have a record related to speed, so I thought it was worth still putting on the list either way. Don't worry, UK. You'll have your time to shine in the moment. All three were built in the late 1930s and survived until 1958. Though they are technically of the same class, one of them was weird. They were all streamlined, but 003, built in 1937, was a cab forward. So 003 is not our record setter. That was 002, built alongside 001 in 1935. That engine set the world speed record for a steam locomotive in 1936, 
at 124.5 miles per hour. That's 200.4 kilometers per hour. That record stood for two years. And it still has a record to its name that's related to speed. That same year, 1936, on the 30th of May, 05002 set a start-stop speed record for steam locomotives. Now, a start-stop speed record is not the same as a regular old speed record. A regular speed record just means that's the speed they hit. That's as fast as they got. That's, that's it. The top speed, that's the record. But a start-stop is different because it considers how fast the locomotive was going on average from the time it started to the time it stopped. And in this case, it was a return run starting in Wittenberg to a signal stop before Berlin Spandau, a distance of 113 kilometers or 70 miles. It had an average speed of 139.4 kilometers per hour. That's 86.6 miles per hour. It did the route in 46 minutes, 32 seconds. And like I said, they did survive World War II and served till 1958. However, two of them wound up being scrapped, including, oddly, the record setter. You'd think 002 would be the one they want to preserve, but sadly, no. She, along with 003, were both scrapped, but 001 got saved. And she's currently on indoor display at the Nuremberg Transport Museum. The London and Northeastern Class A4 4468 Mallard. Okay, here's the one everyone expected to see. Of course I have to talk about the Mallard now, because this is the one that still holds the world speed record, top speed record, for steam locomotives. The A4s were a class of streamlined 462 steam locomotives. They were Pacifics. They were designed by Sir Nigel Gresley for the LNER in 1935. Overall, the class was considered very successful with 35 in total being built, as well as six remaining in preservation, including Mallard herself. The A4s were designed specifically for speed. It wasn't just the streamlining, they were also wind tunnel tested, so they were really looking to minimize air resistance with them. That considered, it makes sense why they would be able to go so fast, even in the 1930s. Cause you'd think more modern steam locomotives designed in the 40s and 50s might be able to beat something that was designed in the 30s. But so far, officially, that just isn't the case. There have been a ton of rumors about other locomotives, like the T1, the S1, over here in America, possibly unofficially beating Mallet's records, but it's all unofficial and circumstantial and word of mouth. You can't call a record broken unless it's been proven. And as much as I as an America would love to say that we have the fastest steam locomotive in the world, the record still belongs to the United Kingdom and the Mallard. On the 3rd of July, 1938, she broke 002's speed record by traveling at 126 miles per hour. That's 203 kilometers per hour. It still stands today. Some people still question the record. For one thing, the Mallard damaged herself doing it. So that was good. Also, the line she was on was very slightly downhill, and some would argue that would give her a bit of a boost. But these types of factors don't change that the record is considered official. That is the speed she reached, and you can't take that away from her. It's also nice to say that she's still around. She hasn't ran in years, and probably never will again. She's part of the National Collection at the National Railway Museum in York, where she's likely to remain for a very long time. The diesel electric record is weird. That's not really a solid placement for our number two spot, but that's because this thing gets really confusing. Because there's several different claims, bold and daring claims, when it comes to the fastest diesel electric locomotive in the world. Now, officially, this record also belongs to the UK. British Rails, ugh, you know, I really thought you weren't going to show up, I don't know what I expected. Class 43, their HST, high speed train. In its inner city 125 format, it hit an absolute maximum speed of 148.5 miles per hour. That's 239 kilometers per hour. Though in regular service, it's supposed to only go 125 miles per hour, 201 kilometers per hour. But that's still really, really fast. That record setting run was led by number 43102, which was later renumbered to 43302. 
and trailed by 43,159. Now I know I throw a lot of shade at British Rail, but I have gone on record repeatedly saying that Class 43s were one of the best things they ever did. They were ambitious, but not overly ambitious. They were just setting out to make a really good, fast diesel. And they did it. They're reliable, speedy, easy to utilize. Everything about them was really quite brilliant. So brilliant that despite the fact that the last ones were built about eh, 40 years ago, they're actually still in service now. Out of 197 that were produced, 127 are still being used in operation. 40 are in storage and 12 are preserved, with only nine being scrapped. An impressive outing by British Rail in general, as British Rail Engineering Limited are the ones that built them. This was an internal project and it worked out splendidly and yet, there are challengers to the Class 43's record. Like I said, officially, it still retains it, but there's actually two other diesel electrics that claim to have beaten it. The first one is the Talgo 21 HSR, which is a project for a high-speed diesel-powered train. So it's called the Renfe Class 355, or the Talgo BT. This is a Spanish diesel, technically a whole train set, and Talgo themselves reported that the 21 attained a speed of 256 kilometers per hour. That's 159 miles per hour on the 9th of July, 2002. That led to them claiming the world record for a diesel train, but the problem is that the claim was never actually proven. And even now, it still isn't proven. So the Class 43 still owns the record, officially. The Spaniards and the Brits are free to argue about this in the comments, because don't worry, there's still one more that claims to have gone even faster than that! This is the TEP-80, which I'm just gonna call TEP-80, because I just don't feel like saying TEP every time. It's a Soviet diesel locomotive that was produced in 1988 and 1989. They only ever made two of them. It's an eight axle articulated design with a single locomotive body. On October 5th, 1993, it was claimed that the TEP-80 broke the speed record for a diesel electric locomotive. It apparently reached 271 kilometers per hour. That's 168 miles per hour. But the problem with it is that the record was never verified by any independent witnesses. So once again, it's not considered official. Unless, of course, you ask Russia, in which case they will say that it is official. But lately, I'm not sure how much I trust Russia. The Spaniards might not be lying. I really don't trust Russia right now, I'm just saying. The TGV POS which is actually a terrible acronym to have on the internet, given I know what that means in shorthand, but that's not what it means in this context, so fight me. This is a TGV train, which is France's intercity high-speed rail service. It was built by Alstom and put into service in 2006. They are actually still in service now, and they're electric trains, which, of course, electric seems to be at the top of the list for all these records I talk about. I don't know what it is. All the most powerful locomotives were electric, too. It just so happens that all the most powerful locomotives on the planet are electric and the fastest one is too out of all the proper railed vehicles again not maglev this one appears to have gone the fastest on the 3rd of april 2007 a train that was utilizing both power cars of train set number 4402 set a new world speed record for travel on conventional rails this thing reached 574.8 kilometers per hour. That's 357.2 miles per hour. That's faster than some planes. And it reached that top speed in 12 minutes and 40 seconds after traveling 73 kilometers. It also took several more kilometers to stop it after it hit such an outrageous speed. In regular operation, these trains do not get nearly that fast, although they do travel quite fast. They are very very high-speed trains. So in terms of rails and being fast, you gotta hand it over to France. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Sundu 267, Orange Glass, Royal Hudson 2860, Laura Ha 444, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, DM Trouble Typhoon, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Alaric Jaspers, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Major Klutz, Hayden DeGro, Ohio Trucker One, and Master of None. Till next time, this is Darkness, and we draw a fond farewell.